Okay, uh, welcome to our conference. Um, Laura Saiku from the Finnish Environment Institute, Suke. Um, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I am a research scientist at the Finnish Environment Institute, and I also lead a, a Kanemure project targeting for emission reduction in municipalities and regions. And today I will uh, present our municipal greenhouse gas emission monitoring system and also how we have applied this data to study locally effective climate work uh, in foreign municipalities network in Finland. So uh, uh, why, uh, why would we have regional emission inventories? Uh, local uh, governments uh, have major role uh, in reducing climate emissions. Uh, many uh, municipalities have set their own ambitious targets and and municipalities also have a large role uh, in the concrete climate measures. So uh, they uh, are involved in the city planning and energy production and so on. And in the municipalities, uh, the governance level, uh, the residents, also businesses, they all are involved in those emission reduction. Uh, but to reduce emissions effectively, reliable emission calculations are needed and they establish a basis for local climate strategies and also for local climate action. Uh, for that, uh, we need to identify the emission sources to know uh, what we will actually be reducing. Then we need to set goals and targets so that we can track the progress. We have much uh, of different kind of reduction measures. Uh, we need to prioritize the measures to pick up uh, the cost effective ones and those uh, that have the largest impact on the emission pathways. Uh, we need to quantify the impact of different activities and learn from others, share best practices, good examples, and so on. There are several essential aspects on regional emission calculations uh, to come up with reliable and evidence-based data. Uh, first of all, uh, the coverage. Um, so all the important emission sources need to be included to have reliable data. Emission calculations need to be responsive. They need to respond to the measures that are taken at the local level. The calculation needs to be transparent uh, so that the results are reliable. The calculation needs to be consistent because uh, emissions calculation uh, is a continuous process. Uh, all this calculation needs to be uh, uh, done year by year. There might be some safe changes and accuracy will improve, but it's not possible to change all the data for all the municipalities each year. And then the results need to be comparable um, between different regions, but also nationally and internationally. This will also uh, increase the reliability of the results. Um, the calculations uh, uh, need to be fair for different kinds of municipalities. There are small towns and big cities uh, there are rural and urban areas, so these aspects need to be considered. Um, the emission calculations uh, need to be also encouraging, so that they will really support e emission reduction measures, especially those uh, measures that have the largest impact. And then um, the emission uh, 
calculations, they need to be communicated to the great public, all the different uh, stakeholders, and also to decision makers at local, but also national level. So uh, the Finnish emission calculations, what, what has been done? So uh, uh, throughout the years, uh, there has been several experiences and attempts to uh, calculate the local level emission in different cities, different towns, um, but no uh, comprehensive set of calculations for all uh, the municipalities with the same kind of method, method has been done. Um, in the background, there has been different guidelines that have been applied, uh, for instance, national greenhouse gas inventory, and also the greenhouse gas protocol for cities, uh, the so-called GPC standard. And based on all these earlier experiences uh, made by uh, different institutes and consultancies and so on, uh, this ALAS model, the current uh, model was developed. So there is now a greenhouse gas inventory for every Finnish municipality calculated in a similar matter. Um, the model includes all of our 310 municipalities. It includes 14 different emission sectors and 77 subsectors. Uh, it includes the greenhouse gas emission and also energy consumption. Um, for each of those sectors included, um, the all accessible data uh, was examined. Mm, so everything that was available uh, was uh, studied and, uh, and utilita utilized whenever uh, re reliable data. Uh, appropriate calculation method was developed. Some sectors uh, have really uh, specific local data when it was available and other sectors include a lot of modeling work. So a uh, bit different methods for, for uh, among the, those different sectors. And uh, uh, there, um, in uh, um, 1918, uh, basically during uh, this uh, one year, all these emissions uh, were, were calculated and in 1919. And now uh, in February, 2020, the first uh, release was launched and the, the latest release is from June 2020 and it covers the years uh, 2005 up to 2018. And the, uh, uh, the calculation model is developed all the time and uh, at the moment uh, the next uh, upcoming release uh, will look like it will appear in, in next spring. It, it will uh, include year 2019, but also preliminary results for 2020, kind of modeled results. This methodology is well documented and all the results are open for everyone in uh, this kind of a emission portal. Uh, so uh, how these sectors are calculated and what kind of uh, boundaries have we set for the emission inventory? Um, so uh, uh, first of all, our emission inventory is in accordance with the GPC standard. Um, in the other end, there are production-based emission uh, that uh, kind of follow the geographical boundaries. And then there are consumption-based emissions that uh, also include trade, uh, like international trade uh, and so on. But our model is somewhere uh, in between. 
So basically, uh, it follows the geographical boundaries, but uh, certain sectors are based more on consumption. Uh, these sectors are electricity and heat, passenger cars and waste treatment. Uh, uh, here is a picture of the GPC uh, standard. Uh, it has uh, these two different levels, basic and basic plus. Uh, it has several uh, sectors and the three different scopes. And while looking at our uh, calculation, uh, we uh, here is marked all those kind of sectors and scopes that we include in our calculations at the model. So uh, basically we cover uh, the basic level in the GPC standard and many uh, aspects or few aspects of the basic plus level. And we are still aiming to, to cover also the rest of these basic plus level uh, emissions. Mm. Then we have uh, kind of two different accounting rules. So uh, first of all, we have internationally comparable results, uh, which is kind of all emissions for the emission trading sector and the, the non-emission trading sector. Uh, it can be divided in those if, if uh, some wants. Um, but then uh, we have developed our own special accounting rules, um, which we call the Hinku calculation. Hinku is the network of four running municipalities uh, towards carbon neutral regions. And, and these accounting rules are developed so uh, that the measures uh, that are locally made would be uh, kind of responded in these calculations. Um, so in these accounting rules, uh, large scale industry and drive through traffic are excluded because these are something uh, that the municipalities themselves can't, can't do that much. Uh, we also uh, have included a system where this kind of emission credits and compensation uh, can be given from a uh, for producing renewable energy. Uh, we have uh, included um, uh, wind power production in this system uh, since the beginning. And uh, now uh, from next year on, we will also include uh, biogas and solar energy uh, production. Like for instance, we use uh, the national um, um, grid emission factors for electricity, uh, but for those uh, municipalities that uh, have wind power production can have the credits for them themselves. And yes, this is the default calculation model uh, for all the Finnish municipalities. So uh, some glimpse uh, of how the results uh, look like. So here are the emission uh, for, for all the municipalities. So kind of the total uh, of Finland uh, calculated uh, with these Hinku rules. They cover something like maybe 70% of the total Finnish emissions. Uh, in the latest years. Emissions decreased in almost every uh, municipalities between 2005 and 2018. So something like two, 290 uh, municipalities out of 310 uh, were, were able to reduce their emissions. Uh, this is a, a good direction, but it's, it's still not uh, fast fast enough. Uh, in Finland, uh, we aim, aim for a uh, very uh, ambitious emission reduction, so carbon neutrality in 2035. Um, 
some uh, uh, separate municipalities reduce their emissions uh, even with uh, 50 percent during this time period and uh, the largest uh, emissions uh, they come from uh, heating so almost one third is from heating and the next next comes uh, uh, road traffic and uh, followed by agriculture and electricity and different municipalities have very different emission profiles in Helsinki which is our capital uh, the district heating uh, is, is uh, the largest uh, emission source so uh, we still have a lot of uh, coal power production uh, in Helsinki. And Halsua is a very small town with a thousand uh, people in somewhere in the middle of Finland. And there uh, the agricultural emission uh, are, are more than half of all the emissions. So uh, the needed emission reduction measures uh, are very, very different. Uh, regarding on the uh, emission profile. And also uh, the uh, average emission uh, per capita, they, they differ a lot. They range from three to 25 tons, um, where the average emission is, is somewhere around seven tons. And there are even negative <laughs> emissions due to, you know, one municipality is due to this uh, uh, compensation uh, mechanism we use. Okay, so uh, this was uh, about uh, the emissions. Due to, uh, due to these uh, figures, uh, we can, we can use them for monitoring the development of uh, single municipalities now, but then we, we can also uh, uh, study uh, several other things. So uh, uh, we, we use these figures to study uh, the impact of local level climate action. And we used uh, these forerunner municipalities network Hinko as a test case. So uh, there are uh, several kinds of networks, also international uh, networks where uh, different municipalities take part in. But the largest one uh, where there are most uh, municipalities is now this Hinku network uh, with currently 74 municipalities and around 2 million inhabitants out of uh, a bit more than 5 million in Finland in total. And these municipalities uh, aim for minus 80% emissions by 2030. And the scope is, is the same as in this Hinko calculation. So they aim to reduce uh, electricity, heating, and transportation related emissions, emissions from agriculture and waste management. So this is basically a uh, um, uh, this excludes in industry under the EU ETS and this uh, dry fuel traffic. And uh, these municipalities have uh, committed uh, with a decision by municipal council. So these, there are kind of political uh, background uh, uh, and support uh, for these emission reductions. And this network uh, has uh, since 2008 being coordinated by the Finnish Environment Institute. Mm, the emission change between 2005 uh, and 2018 uh, has been minus 70 uh, percent. Um, and if uh, you remember the earlier picture uh, with the total uh, Finland minus 15, so it's a little bit faster but we still wanted to really know 
the impact of this network um, when all other uh, things uh, have been taken into account. So, uh, so we studied the impact of this HINKU network on municipalities' greenhouse gas emissions between 2005 and 2017. Um, that time we still had the 2017 data as the latest. Um, and uh, we used this panel regression model um, where a large set of exogenous variables uh, was included. So we kind of uh, look at the monthly mean temperatures, precipitation, fuel prices, uh, urbanity, um, land surface area, uh, the, the finance uh, of uh, the municipalities, also mean social demographic characteristics in each municipality. So we kind of excluded all these, uh, all these things and Eventually, uh, we found a highly statistically significant and negative relationship uh, between the municipalities' greenhouse gas emissions and being uh, um, and having been joined in this network. So, joining this network uh, just as such uh, um, lead uh, to the situation uh, where these municipalities had their emissions at 3% lower level than otherwise without uh, having joined this network. And uh, to kind of open up a little bit uh, of this, uh, we, uh, we interviewed for the municipalities. So basically all those municipalities uh, that had joined before 2019. So uh, what they, uh, how they have perceived the role of this network, uh, the network have given them motivation, uh, inspiration and uh, peer support as the most important factors. And almost half uh, of the municipalities felt that the expert support given by SUKE or some other organization had been really important in their climate work. And they had also been supported uh, by, by some uh, complementary projects or uh, they had recruited uh, some, some more uh, people to, to do their climate work. And uh, having joined this network uh, with the political support on the background, uh, they, they had the some organizational support. So the contact persons in these municipalities that we interviewed, uh, they felt uh, that these networks justified the action in the municipalities. So they could say that now we uh, we must do this and this investment because we are in in the network. So it was easier inside the organization to carry out the investments. And then besides uh, the municipalities felt that they had uh, been uh, had positive PR image uh, and also communicational support uh, from the network. And also engaging uh, of actors outside uh, the municipal organization uh, uh, was felt as one factor uh, for some municipalities uh, to Kind of enhance climate work, even though this uh, was felt uh, a bit difficult in, in many of those municipalities. But uh, most of these uh, interviewed uh, municipal actors, they experienced that the network had had an impact on these concrete actions, uh, and or at least on the decision making processes. So these interviews kind of uh, supported our quantitative results. So uh, uh, to uh, conclude, um, to, to follow uh, and to enhance the climate action uh, in, uh, in the municipalities, um, reliable and evidence-based uh, data is needed to construct regional emission 
inventories. And developing uh, these kind of detailed greenhouse gas metrics, it enables uh, evaluation and, and monitoring of the municipal uh, emission and the climate action and the effectiveness of the local climate work. And this kind of data uh, can be uh, evaluated uh, to, uh, can be used to evaluate also different kinds of uh, um, activities. So in Finland, uh, we, we showed uh, that joining a climate network can actually lower local emissions. And here are still some uh, references um, to our emission calculation principles. There has been uh, many people from the Finnish Environment Institute uh, in, involved in these calculations. And, and also um, a reference to the article that we submitted on the impact of uh, the climate network. So thank you.